Hey guys, my name is Ryan and it's great to be back here with you this week. And my name is Sarah. Ryan, I have a question for you. Have you ever gone to an event or a gala that was just really extravagant and you felt out of place? Yeah, I actually have a great story for this. My mom graduated from her master's and so our whole family was invited to this dinner to celebrate and it was like a black tie event. There was so many pieces of cutlery, so many glasses. We had no idea what to do with everything and we felt completely out of place, but it actually ended up being a pretty cool event and the food was amazing. I can see how you felt out of place. Yeah, there. absolutely. In today's God story, we're gonna hear about how Mary acted extravagantly. Let's watch it together. I have children and a gluten allergy, so I know something about smells. But the worst smell I ever encountered was when I spent a lovely hour in the summer once, up to my neck, only in a bathing suit, in bat poop. Because I found this amazing old barn on the side of a beach. I was 19, I styled myself as somewhat of a photographer. So I went in, I saw the lights going, I snapped the photo, and the entire ceiling was bats and they let their displeasure be known. And so I dove as they swarmed down around me and I dove beneath the floorboards of this old rickety barn and it turns out beneath the floorboards was the bat's toilet. And I lay there in my bathing suit until they calmed down. Hi everybody, I'm Jamie Robertson and thankfully I no longer smell like bat poop. Smells. Now what do smells have to do with today's big idea? Well, our big idea is we can love Jesus extravagantly. Well, let's start by looking at the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and we're in verses 1 to 8. Now six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. Now a dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor, he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole for himself. And Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Okay, so what's this story about? We have first off this, this dinner party. We have this mention of Lazarus and we have this discussion with Judas and the poor. And then of course, what John says about Judas's character. But I wanna focus in on, on the perfume that Mary used to anoint Jesus' feet because what is actually happening here? Well, for starters, it's called nard. How many of us know what nard is? I would uh, wager dollars to donuts that not a lot of you ever use the word nard when you're talking about perfume. But at that time, it was incredibly expensive. It came all the way from the Himalayas in like these alabaster jars. It was, in, it was incredibly extravagant. I mean, the, the smells that this created, they, they would use it for, for kings, like they would, they would scent the throne of the king. And, and this is important, in the burial of, of a king or somebody very, very high up in the government, they would, they would have this smell around and it was beautiful and it was associated with, with royalty and power. And it was literally worth a year's wages for a common person. So when Judas says this, he's right about the extravagant expense of this gift. But what Mary did with that was she extravagantly gifted Jesus. And then as she, as she anoints his feet and she dries it with her hair, so beautiful, the fragrance, literally the fragrance of her act fills the room and people can smell the beautiful essence of the love she has for Jesus. But the point of what Mary's doing is she's pouring this, this year's salary worth of, of perfume onto Jesus' feet. She is saying, you are my king, I am at your feet, and she's drying it with her hair. I want you to, to visualize how humbling and intimate and beautiful this act is. And then the other side, you see, you see Judas with his, his base sort of carnal, selfish desires cannot see Jesus for who Jesus is because he's too trapped up in his, in his wanting the money. And he thinks that this, this jar of smelly liquid is too much of a gift for Jesus. But for Mary, 
She will pour it out gladly at his feet. And this is the extravagant love of those who, who get to spend some time and learn about Jesus. It, it becomes so much bigger than, than the material possessions. Your life becomes so much bigger. Yes, we're not gonna get perfume from the Himalayas. Yes, we're not gonna be pouring like liquid on Jesus' physical feet like Mary. But let me tell you, there are elements in you, there are gifts and dreams in you that will, especially when you start to focus on Jesus, will inspire you to these great and tremendous acts that for some people will seem too extravagant, too out there, what are you doing? But for you will be this powerful, beautiful, intimate act between you and your savior, you and your king. And my young friends, the rest of the world will be able to sense and smell the beauty of your extravagant love. All right, I am Jamie Robertson, you are you. Both of those things are amazing. Remember to love Jesus extravagantly and stay out of bat-filled barns. Wow, okay, so Mary used this really expensive perfume to lavish upon Jesus to wash his feet. But for somebody who actually didn't have that much, this would have been such an extravagant gift. And take note that she didn't keep it for herself. She gave it away to Jesus. Yeah, and people would have thought that was pretty wasteful. They probably would have thought it was a little bit weird, but Mary used what she had to be so generous to Jesus and serve him. Let's watch the story about our friend Jess from Ottawa and see what she did to show her love to Jesus. I'm someone that I chose one sport and I did it full-time competitive and my dream growing up was always to be an Olympic figure skater. Growing up, I just would watch the Olympics and dream that that was where I would be one day. My name is Jessica Feeney and I live in Ottawa. I've grown up in Ottawa my entire life and my favorite part of living in Ottawa is that I get to skate the canal every single winter. I also love that we're close to Gatineau and so there's tons of outdoor activities to do. So growing up, I was a competitive figure skater, did so many competitions and was really at this national level, but came to this place where, you know, I realized that probably the reality of me going to the Olympics wasn't gonna come true, but I still was so passionate about skating and had this dream of also being a performer at Disney on Ice. I loved the creative and the performing side of skating and I knew this was another way of uh, being able to continue with my sport, but now do it uh, to perform for kids and really enjoy it. I was always known as the figure skater. Whatever house I went to as a kid, their parents would say, oh, you're Jess, you're the figure skater. Or every teacher I met would say, oh yeah, you're the figure skater. You leave class earlier, you're always traveling, always competition. When I was in high school, I moved to Montreal and trained full time. And so I had this correspondence back and forth. So everything that I knew was just this figure skater. It really was my identity. And I didn't know who else I was without figure skating. So every day when I would head to the rink, it was hours and hours of training. You know, eat, sleep, skate was really, I guess, the theme of my life. And I came to this place where I knew there's got to be something more to life than just sport. So what I make that Olympic dream, is that really going to fulfill me? There's got to be more, more purpose to life than just skating. So my last year of high school, I became a Christian. And as I got to know God, I felt like I needed to pursue him full time. I was that person that, you know, if I did something, I was all in. And so now I met Jesus and I wanted to be all in for Jesus. And I didn't think that the two could go together. Figure skating for me was so much my identity and who I was known that I really wanted to figure out what it meant to have my identity found in being a daughter of our king and of our father. And so I felt that I couldn't skate anymore and needed to walk away from it and just hang up my skates and now pick up my Bible and full time focus on getting to know who Jesus was. When I became a Christian, I decided that I wanted to do a sports discipleship school with YWAM, Youth with a Mission, which the mission is uh, to know God and to make Him known. While I was there, uh, Disney on Ice reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to join tour next week. And it was such a hard decision, but I felt that, you know, I'd, I'd put this, my faith in God, and He had called me to do YWAM, and I needed to trust Him and needed to continue to stay where I was planted. Um, but it was so hard to say no to this dream that I had grown up with wanting to skate for Disney. 
So I had the privilege of attending a national training camp where it brings together elite athletes all together to learn about how to integrate faith in sport. And while I was there, God really met me and showed me that you can use sport as a way to worship Him and honor Him and that He actually has given us these gifts and talents so that we can glorify Him with what He's given us. And so it was there that I really began to understand that God had given me this passion for skating, this desire, and that I could now use it, um, not as an idol, but actually knowing that my faith and my identity was found in God and now use it as a way of worshiping and just enjoying sport uh, and my passion that I still had. And so he brought me back into my sport through that camp. So right after this camp, I got an email from Disney asking me if I wanted to join Tour again. And I felt this was yeah, just an amazing opportunity to go back on and be able to really enjoy um, this passion I had and then also be able to share my faith with people as I traveled the world, as I trained with skaters from around the world. And so it was this cool opportunity of God saying, you can use your sport and you can pursue me both at 100%, all in uh, with whatever you're doing. I think often it becomes just a training ground and a place where it's a job and it's no longer the reason you started of just getting on the ice and enjoying it and pursuing it for fun. But as I learned who God was, I feel that he really helped me understand that you can step onto that ice and have that, that excitement that you once had as a little kid because no longer are you worrying about the voices around you or what people are gonna say, what your coach is gonna say if you make a mistake because you're rooted in knowing that God loves you and created you for this and gave it to you. I now have the privilege of working with Athletes in Action and I get to come alongside elite athletes and journey alongside them, helping them in a similar situation that I was in of figuring out where does your identity come from? How can you find that joy and passion as you train as an elite athlete and really use it as a place for Jesus to help shape you and grow you into more of his likeness? As I've grown in my faith, I realize that it's not 100% one way into your sport or 100% into pursuing God, but actually we can put the two together and we can grow more like Jesus as we pursue the things that we love. And he's given us these gifts, these talents, these dreams in order to glorify him if we really trust him in it as well. Oh my gosh, that girl can skate. I loved it. She can. And you know what I thought was pretty cool is that her skating went full circle. She actually stopped skating to pursue a relationship with God and figure out what that was about. But then she actually realized you can put the two together and use skating to honor God. And when we think about our big idea, Jess is a great example of this. She loves Jesus extravagantly and she goes out of her way to put him first. And we can actually do that too, Sarah. We can actually choose to live a simpler life, to be generous with our possessions and actually find new intentional ways to share the good news about Jesus. Let's break up into our small groups and see how this plays out in our own stories.